Whoa, good morning world. Today is Thursday. It's a rain morning today. The shit hit the fan yesterday. I've been asking for weeks if I could have the key to this garage because there's a petrol tin in that keeps popping. No luck. So I took the lock off and I broke it so no more locks can be on it. He went off his head, started raving under plaster about how I'm a white supremacist. Which gets me because I married a man that's of colour. And I had two kids with him and my views haven't changed. He raves on about my family and how my mother was sick in the head and how I'm sick in the head and how I need help. I mean, I know I need help. I've needed help for such a long time, especially since I was molested at 12. I've been getting help for years because of a broken down marriage. I got back with this man four times. Doesn't that say something? Fuck, of course I need fucking help. Anyway, how he's gonna sell the house and gonna go his own way and blah 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 the trouble is he says it but he doesn't do it I'm so sick this morning I've got back pain so bad <sighs> if I had tears to cry I would be crying right now but I don't have any more tears at the moment to cry yeah raving on how my mother and my brothers were racist and I don't know whether they were. I never had any indication they were. I mean, my grandmother as a child, her dad was <clears throat> Micronesian. And as kids, they were taunted because they were coloured people. They were chased, they were abused, eggs were thrown at them, rocks were thrown at them. I don't see how that can turn them into racist people. But anyway, I can't speak for them. I don't really know what was in their head at the time, but anyway, he blames all my parents are dead anyway. I've got no family living. The only family I've got is Barbara and Sharon. They're my only family and I call them my sisters. They're my stepsisters. I'm just so over all this shit, and if I was well enough, I would go and see a solicitor. I would end this. Believe me, I want nothing more to end it, but I'm so sick at the moment, pain-wise. I speak to my local GP via telehealth every two days. I'm worried about my mental health. I haven't had any suicidal thoughts, but I'm worried about that. I've got a psychiatrist appointment to reassess my meds sometime in September I think which I'll follow up today I've got a neuro appointment next Wednesday doctor's appointments coming out my ear holes oh man 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 don't know what else to tell you guys I've never felt so alone before because I'm so isolated at home because of COVID-19 or the coronavirus, the Nova coronavirus. <sighs> I do socialize, but as Victoria suffers a massive second wave, I'm too scared to get out and about now. I'm way too scared to go out and about. We've got some, some states in, well, one state in particular, Victoria, which is probably around about 2,000 kilometres away, maybe about 3,000 kilometres away. They're in lockdown because of the second wave of the Novid coronavirus. Oh, boy, oh, boy. My dilemmas, my dilemmas. My son is putting up with a lot of mental stress at the moment. He doesn't recognise it. His father has got him in such a way that he doesn't realise that talking to my son about adult values and how I'm a white supremacist and how my 
parents were bloody well racist and they had Micronesian in my family. I am, I worked out, one, two, three, fourth generation Micronesian. You can't tell it, but as I get older and older, and as I do age, I will get darker. I carry a lot of my dad's um, genes, actually. I look a bit like my mum, but to look at my fingers, on my dad, to look at my body, on my dad. You know, and I've been thinking about it. Although they never showed any signs, apparently they'd confront him at the pub and my brother and he broke a glass and threatened him one time and my brother threatened my current husband at the time apparently. And my mother tried to break us up numerous times and yeah, she did admit to me later on in life that she didn't want any of her kids to move away so she started shit. It took a lot to actually um, confront that demon in himself, to admit to that. Oh boy, oh boy, life, it sucks sometimes, it really sucks. And I really don't want to show my emotions in front of my so-called husband who doesn't pay for any of my medical stuff. Um, he never has paid for anything of mine. For years and years, we've never had a joint bank account. We've never paid bills jointly. I've never had access to his money. As I said, we've never had joint access to joint bank accounts. What type of relationship doesn't have that trust from the very beginning? Why do I keep going back to this man? This man punched me in the stomach when I found out I was pregnant. <laughs> And today he says that he has no memories. It's selective memory, I think, memory loss. Oh, my neck is killing me. I've had no fevers. I feel terrible in the chest. I'm going from subject to subject, I know, but I'm trying to get it all in as I remember it. I don't have a chesty cough or anything, but I've never shown fevers. But with my super pubic catheter, I've always, I've always had infections with that. So I've got stuff going on downstairs as well as my neurological complaint. I've got bulging discs, spinal stenosis. I've got disc herniations to the extent where I've got myelopathy in the cervical, neck, lumbar, mid-back, thoracic, which is a little bit further up than the lumbar. Lower back is the lumbar, sorry. Thoracic is the mid-back and in my sacral areas. So, uh, you know, he's never taken interest in any, he never come to any doctors of mine. He never wants me to go to any of his appointments. He's always hidden those appointment times and days with me. Carries his phone around all the time, locks his car all the time. What type of man does this and doesn't have trust with his wife? I mean, these are all red flags. Why did I not see them before? Was, am I ignorant? Am I ignorant, people? I must be. Or blind, either one. <sighs> you know, I know in other times when I knew things were over with him and me, I had such hatred for him. But I'm so sick at the moment. I don't have time to be, I don't, I am scared of him. If anything happens, then these are going to be my testament. I don't think anything's going to happen, but if it ever does, I mean, number one, I've got my phone on me all the time, so I can call Triple O, which is emergency services. It's like 111 in UK, I think, in New Zealand, it's 999 or vice versa. In um, America, it's 911, but here in Australia, it's Triple O. And I don't, I won't hesitate. If he lays a hand on his son or on me, I will call the police straight away. Because that's when I do feel like one of us is in danger, if it ever happens. And I pray to God it never happens. And about God, I pray to him every day to help me make the choices I have to make. 
the heavens are falling down today, which is great. My plants don't need a water. Okay, folks, I've rambled on for 10 minutes, so I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to post this video, get it up, and hopefully today I'll have some more information for you. Love you guys. Thank you very much. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share my channel. I appreciate every single subscriber that has stuck by me. Thank you so much for your continued support. It may not be in monetary form, but it's in this form, listening to me, sharing my information, getting it out there to other domestic violence sufferers. Let me know in the comments below whether you want to hear about my child molestation, and how it happened and what happened, because I think I'm prepared to tell that story right now. I'm quite strong at the moment and I'd like to tell that story before and if anything happens. Love you guys. Thank you very much for staying with me. I really appreciate your efforts and your time and your dedication. Love you all.